Hey friend, if you've ever done any kind of programming, you know how useful functions can be, and with AutoHotKey, I want us to be using functions early and often. Um, functions are a way to recycle your code so that every time you run into an instance where you need a certain job to be done, you can just call the function instead of typing out all the instructions again. So functions are a good way to recycle your code, um, either in the same project or they're easy to move from one project to another. And so let's just jump right in. Um, in this case, I've got a function here already, but I want to add another function. Um, so what you do when you create a function is you give it a name. So let's just call this uh, message the user. And you want to do some uh, parentheses and what we are going to need to do is some open brackets and everything inside here is our function now the way I like to do function declarations is I put the brackets on a new line just so that I know this is where the function is being defined for the first time I always put them under here on functions if you haven't already go ahead and open up downloadmob.com slash learn auto hotkey grab this project file give you some structure to kind of your uh, beginning learning phase and as well in there you can uh, find some contact information if you have any questions I'm not gonna find them in the comments um, so that's a good place to go get this get this text editor if you like it it's kinda cool you get uh, functions listed over here because it's uh, kinda dealing with auto hotkey specifically okay so inside this we already learned about message box so we're just gonna say message box um, hello user so every time we call this function it's just gonna message the user so let's use this up in our actual program this main area so what's gonna happen is our program starts it runs into this message user and it's going to jump down here and see, okay, what do I do in message user is I message the user, hello user. So I'll go ahead and save and run that. Seems to work. And then it encounters the exit app. It doesn't go down here and start doing all this other stuff. That's kind of how functions work. I like to label all my functions with fn and then the name of the function itself. That way, when I'm up here and my program is a lot bigger, I can know, oh, here's a function. I have to go look in the functions area to see what that is actually doing. Now, functions also have parameters. Inside these uh, uh, parentheses, we can pass variables to the function. So let's look at this one over here, this uh, fn convert month what is going to happen is when we call this function we can give it one variable and that is called pair a month I like to preface all my function parameters with the word para that way I can just kind of keep track of it easier so let's use this one and in this program where we're kind of um, I want to simulate the idea of maybe we're going through a file and in that file the month is defined as text but we are more interested in getting the the date as <clears throat> as a number that way it can be sorted or we can uh, do other things that are more interesting that we couldn't do with text so we take that and that variable is going into our function so our function is going to have access to that information one piece of inform one uh, important thing to keep in mind with your functions is the idea of scope uh, scope in auto hotkey is different from other programs but probably same as certain other ones it all depends um, your function does not get access to these if we said in our function okay day we need to do something uh, day is now equal to something else like the day is now equal to 02 well that wouldn't work Be well I mean it would work but at the 
later when we need this, it would still be 01 because this function doesn't get access outside of itself. So one, if, if you find that you do need access to that information outside there, you can define the word global as the very beginning of your function. And that's going to give it access to everything in the parent, uh, in the main pro script. I don't want us to be using that too often, but it can be useful. Um, the other thing you can do is maybe you say, well, I don't want it having access to day, but I do need access to year all the time. So you can just go like this, and now it only has access to the year. It's not going to mess up your day. Now, this might seem overly restrictive at first, but as your program gets bigger, you want to keep this in mind. Let's clean that up. Now, we haven't really talked much about if, but I think the concept is pretty universal. Um, in programming, you run into an if statement. It's going to figure out if this is true, then do this. I think that's pretty basic. If you have trouble with that, maybe we can do a supplemental video, but that I think is pretty understandable. The only other thing to mention there is the concept of else. Else is if something is not true, then do this instead. Uh, we're not needing that here in this particular case, um, so let's just forget about that for now. But very useful to know in the long run. Okay, so the other thing to uh, look at here is this idea of return. Return is when your function is running, eventually it's you, we'd like to get some information out of it. So when your function is running and it encounters a return, it's going to grab this and spit it back out as the result. So here it doesn't really do anything. This function is evaluating to 01 because what happens? The month goes in and it says, okay, this pair of month that we got is equal to January. I'm encountering the, so he's, well, let's just change this to uh, April, let's say. Um, so what's going to happen instead is it's going to come in here. It says, is it this? No, it's not, so I'm going to go to the next one. I'm not going to go in here and see this. It's going to say, is it February? No. Is it March? No. Is it April? Yes. What do I do if it's April? Well, I give back 04. So it basically just, it's, it's going to exit this function. And this here is going to kind of become a variable of 04. So to use that information, let's go ahead and say message box. Um, I'm using a percent here because message box is a little simpler. Uh, it normally expects just plain text. It's not expecting a variable. Here, this percent sign says, uh, eva evaluate what's next as mm, as a variable. So let's go ahead and just run this. Okay. So that kind of gave us what we were expecting. The other thing I want to mention here is putting variables or putting functions inside of functions. I eventually you have functions do very simple things they might do complicated things as well but you can kinda use them in conjunction so let's uh, let's convert this message box here or message the user uh, doesn't take any parameters at the moment it doesn't get any new information so instead let's uh, say you're gonna get the message and with that message that you are receiving, go ahead and do the same thing. Now we're, this is kind of 
an interesting way to go with this because we're not saving a whole lot of space here, but for the purpose of this, I just wanted a simple examples. But probably normally, I mean, this doesn't really save any time than doing it this way. But this is just a simple example. So let's go ahead and use this. And so we're going to put, <laughs> this is getting, this uh, example is getting a little crazy, but maybe it's good for you to see. So what's happening here is, hmm, this is not really what I was thinking to do. I was more thinking to go like this, or you could go like this, uh, except we would want to say return the um, a one like that. So that would work or this would work. Um, I'll go ahead and run it. Okay, we still have April as a one. So what's going on is it's coming in here. It's saying we have to message the user of what? We have to message them the convert month of month. So that is kind of two examples in one perhaps. Um, when you pass a, a parameter to a function it's assuming that it's a variable. If you don't want to pass a variable you need to put it in quotes. Um, so let's say uh, December. This should work. Yep. Oh, wait, no it didn't because we just said message the user December. That's not quite what we wanted. We wanted to do more like this. Now, look at here. Message the user. We're missing a parentheses. And that's kind of where this uh, text editor might help you if you're still new, is you can see everything. Okay. Let's go ahead and run that. 12. Okay, so that's working. Uh, I hope you guys get the idea here. One thing that I do just to keep things clear for me is when functions don't have an input and don't return something, I usually like to call them SB or s for subroutines. Um, this just helps me. I don't use subroutines too much, but when I see SB underscore, I know. I can't be doing things like remember this var. If I run into that, I know, well, this doesn't make any sense because subroutines don't give back any information. They just do something. They don't return some information. That's something I have found useful in the past. Um, maybe you will as well. The other thing is more often my subroutines are global. So I use subroutines a lot as space saving things because I they define they do things that I know about but I don't really have room for them in the in the main area of my code. Um, that doesn't make too much sense in the context of a very small program like this but as your program gets bigger it's uh, a useful thing to know. I think that's going to be it for now. I hope this makes sense. Please write some functions of your own before moving on to the next video. I'd like you to spend a little bit of time with it. Go ahead and just use message box. Um, i just like you to do message box and then fn your function and go ahead and I'd love it if you could get down the idea of a parameter so uh, there you go like that I'd love it if you could do something like that and play around with this until you see something in message box if you're not seeing anything we wouldn't see anything in message box here because oh because I don't have your function is not a real thing. Ugh. Well, now I've destroyed other functions that are used elsewhere. <laughs> I 
I'd love it if you could write this out and I want you to make this work by defining your function and having it input something before you move on to the next video. That's going to be it for now. Thanks for staying strong, staying with it. I'll see you in the next one.